G'day everyone and uh, welcome back to my little home machine shop. Sorry I haven't been on YouTube for a while, I've been really, really busy. To put it simply, I've been busier than a one-legged man in a backside kicking competition. But anyway, the new job's got me running ragged and uh, little shop time, unfortunately. Um, and I'm back into CNC land pretty heavily at the moment. So the manual machining's sort of taken a bit of a back foot while I get this um, advanced manufacturing centre set up. So today I thought, uh, being you know, new month of October, I'd like to give you a little bit of an update of what I've been up to in the shop, uh, where we're at. So good news, I've finally got some new tools into the shop today. So I've bought myself a Daintree Live Centre. These are Australian made uh, Live Centre and I got that through um, Artie at Live Tools. No, it's not a sponsored video, I paid for the tooling, full disclosure. I also bought a new, treated myself with some new tools and bought myself a little um, ever more little 0.5 to 13 millimeter drill chuck so roughly uh, it goes all the way up to half inch and Morse tapered three and uh, I believe it's a Taiwanese made product where the Daintree tool is Australian made but look this Taiwanese product I'll tell you what it's um it's you've got to look pretty hard to fold it it's pretty cool it comes with a spinner as well and I also got that through Artie as well so that was my latest purchase to the channel so a little treat you may remember also, oh, I would have been a couple of months ago now, I interviewed Tim Rosenthal from Rosenthal Products with his Rose Indexer. I bought two from him and they turned up as well. So these are absolutely fantastic. They're made out of steel. Uh, the there's no very little machining marks. It's actually faultless. It's a beautiful piece of kit. So I can't wait to put those uh, to use and... Being steel, their suckers have got a bit of weight to them. Let me tell you, what I like about this one, it has the degree around the front of it. So I might have a little job for that today anyway, when I continue with this video. I got some shop stickers as well. Um, Diego from Astro Works popped into the new training centre where I worked. And uh, Diego's not, uh, not much on YouTube, I believe, but he's more so on Facebook and Instagram. And Diego runs a little company here in Melbourne, Australia called Astroworks. They make some high-end telescopes, some really cool, funky stuff. Um, and he's running, uh, I think he's got three or three to five CNC machines from routers to CNC mills to CNC lathes. And he's making a really nice product. So I'll flash up Diego there as well. I had a letter come in all the way from the UK, <clears throat> from the United Kingdom. And that's from Ollie over at Ollie's Workshop. Ollie sent me some stickers. Thank you, Ollie. Much appreciated, buddy. I'll get them up on the board as well. Uh, your stickers are in the mail, Ollie. I believe the postal service is very slow at the moment. Now, buddy, you wouldn't believe it. My, well, I won't blame the wife, but I forgot to check the mailbox and left it in there overnight and the snails got to it. So I need to throw some snail bait into the letterbox. And it's chewed off the end of your letter, mate. I apologise. So, he, he, Ollie writes, Hi, Aaron. I only recently discovered your channel, so I've not been... Uh, and it's, it's been eaten away. <laughs> I've not been uh, watched all your videos yet, but we'll, uh, but are keen to... Uh, but, but I'm keen with what I've seen. I really enjoy it. Keep up the good work, Ollie. Thanks, Ollie. I was trying to decipher that from that edge broken, mate. I'm an idiot for leaving that in the mail. I do apologise. But they look... Thanks for the stickers, buddy. I'll get them up on the wall soon. I also received a little present in the mail. This was unexpected from a gentleman called Shane Edwards. Shane is one of my viewers to the channel. Uh, Shane's been generous before. He sent me a... You may have seen I put it on a community post. He, he sent me a brand new uh, finishing tool, uh, Mitsubishi finishing tool, which is awesome. That's going to look good in the Dorian. I've just got to buy another tool holder for it or make one. And anyway, today Shane sent me some drill chucks, buddy, and I appreciate that. I've actually got the exact same one that came with the old Colchester. So a little Morse Taper 2 drill chuck, a little tiny Jacobs chuck here. This, it is branded Jacobs, by the way. Um, what's this one? I can't read that one, sorry. He sent me another big Morse Taper 3 chuck as well. Made in England. A number 34, 1 to 13. So thank you, mate. Very nice, very nice chuck. Still operates nicely. And he sent me this one here, which I've never seen one before, Shane. It looks like it looks like a very 
uh, early collet chuck of some description. It's sexy, that's for sure. It's got this collet and it's got this straight shank. I wouldn't mind betting this is off a, um, what do they call them? Uh, a turret lay, the manual turret lay back in the day with that straight shank tooling like the um, Alfred Herbert uh, threading heads have, mate. So thank you for that, buddy. I really appreciate it. All right, so what am I up to today? So what I'm up to today, I've, I have been working the shop. However, it hasn't been film worthy because I've already shown you uh, these jobs before. So um, my buddy Wayne, who's into vintage engines, he's uh, got some more work for me. I've been pumping out some studs when he needs them. And I've, of course, I've filmed it before. I wasn't going to film it again and flood the channel with making studs, all right? So, however, this one might be a little bit more challenging. So this is a T-bolt out of a vintage engine. I believe it's an oil engine. I can't remember the, the make or model. I'll flash it up on the screen here if I can remember it. And it's rusted to the buggery. He, we've taken... So Wayne came down here. We sat down. We did a bit of a rough sketch and worked out some dimensions. It's another half-inch BSW, 12 TPI thread. Um, so, yeah, that, that should make for some good viewing today. So how about I kick this workshop into gear and I'll bring you over to the lathe and we'll start doing some machining. All right, and I'll uh, touch base with you at the end of the video. Okay, so Wayne's dropped off a lump of steel here and um, probably been kicking around in the back paddock. But anyway, we'll face that centre drill it and then I'll put a live centre up it to support it and then do some more machining. So let's get into that now. Now that took a quite a few number of uh, facing cuts to clean up, so yeah, it's the old uh, the old chunk of steel, but things have been machining all right. Not sure what it is, but the old carbide kit makes short work of it. Okay, let's send it all that now. Probably a little bit fast on that centre drill, so we'll just slow him down to 7 to 70. Now I'll just check my new live centre to make sure that I can support that. I think I can. I'm not sure how well you can see here, but you can see with the new live centre from Daintree, I can actually get the tool right in there close to the job. Right? Now I'll move this camera for you so you can see. Now how groovy is that? Okay, so now I haven't got the centre in the road, I can get right in here. And these were designed, I believe, for use in CNC lays. Alright, but it's uh, going to serve me very well here today. Right, let's get cracking. It needs to be five inches long. And like I said, I think this is half inch BSW thread I need to put on here as well. All right, let's get cracking. Now we're not chip breaking, so the next cut I'll, I'll up it a little bit more, I think. I've got my trusty old piece of cardboard here that stopped me being showered. Of course, one hand on the auto feed.
I'm still machining away here at the moment. I've made three of these so far and they come up quite well and that's bloody hot. Um, unfortunately, like all men, we've run out of length and the stock Wayne gave me just wasn't long enough to do the last one. I've got to make four of these. So I, I had a bit of hex bar, uh, luckily, and so I put that in the chuck and it's just the right size. So I'm machining that. It must be free machine grade because it's machining like butter. Let me show you. So uh, here's the bolt, this is what they look like. Um, I've put this in a little collet block, a little square one, uh, ER32. I've got a 12 to 13 millimetre ER collet in there. <coughs> now to keep them lined up, I slide the job in and I register it against an Allen key. And then just nip it up here take the allen key out and just tighten up the collet block now make sure the bias is tight now I've got my DRO set so I worked out what the diameter was and halved it and then typed that into the DRO I've got my quill locked we'll start him up and I'm just going to be taking light cuts here probably one mil depth of cut each pass First pass will be at 14 millimetres. Final depth will be Righto, I'll flip this over now. And back we go again. Okay, I'll finish that one. I can take him out now. Well, we're back at the bench, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I've finished these. Wayne actually popped in. He didn't want to go on camera, and he took one of these home to check it, just to test it. I'm quite happy with it. They came out well. Um, the, I was shooting for 15 here, 15 millimetres. They're a little bit uh, over and above. That one's a bit undersized. That one's on the money, 15. I was hitting, trying to hit 30 there on the OD. Like I said, these aren't critical. These are going into a vintage engine, um, into the block, which and they apparently they go in a, and, uh, in a slot and then they pull the barrel down, apparently. I believe it's an oil engine, uh, Wayne was telling me. Uh, once again, thank you to all those people that sent me stuff in. Um, especially Shane with all your gifts, mate. I did 
uh, pass on that little drill chuck, mate. I hope you're okay with that. Um, I actually gave it to my buddy Wayne, who, who's got a little lathe, the Morse Taper 2, because as you know, I just bought that brand new drill chuck. So uh, you did say pass them on to a good home if I found one. Um, I also forgot to say that Shane gave me this button die holder too, mate, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yes, don't forget to check out Ollie's channel. Go and have a look at Astro Works. And go and check out Rosenthal Pyrox. Okay, check out the Rose Indexer. Alrighty, guys, thanks again, and I'll see you on the next Aaron Engineering video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.